Hi, my name is Drew Pienta, and today I will be presenting my findings on the automatic segmentation of the aorta using deep learning. Um, some quick background. Um, locating the aorta from a computed topography scan often takes about 45 minutes to an hour um, when done manually. That's just from personal experience, but you know, it, it can take longer as well. Um, for that reason, we're looking at ways to accelerate the process using automation. Um, in this case, we're employing the um, deep learning architecture uh, VNet. VNet is a uh, fully convolutional encoder decoder um, network with skip pathways on each major level. Um, the one I'm using is set up to take in data with a dimension of 128 by 128 by 64. Um, that's a volumetric um, data, uh, so we, we treat it in voxels. Um, all the data that I have comes from the multimodality whole heart segmentation data set. There are 20 CT scans of the chest, um, and each one of those I labeled manually um, to locate the aorta, and uh, that's my training and validation data set. Um, in order to use the VNet or to train it, um, a significant amount of code has to be written or was written um, to reduce the dimension to that 128 by 128 um, by however many slices um, size, and then to randomly select blocks um, from that that are 64 slices um, in size. Um, that's just to reduce the amount of memory required um, to do the training operation. At that resolution, a batch size of four can be achieved um, while maintaining complete batch memorization and dropout, uh, which is important to limit the amount of overfitting that the network uh, realizes. The uh, training was done using a scholastic gradient descent um, optimizer with a variable learning rate. The Sorensen dice coefficient was used for both loss and uh, validation scoring. Uh, the validation was run every 25 epochs. Um, 19 files were used for training, so there'd be 19 files, and then one file was used for validation um, to ensure that overfitting didn't occur. Um, a K-fold validation was employed. Uh, that basically means that one file was used as validation while the remaining 19 um, were used for training, and then um, every other file was then gone through as well. So we trained a total of 10 times, um, and each time a different validation file was used. This helps to ensure that the, the data set is relatively balanced in terms of difficulty. Um, if it's not, we'll see that we'd have major outliers in places, and there is one, so we'll get to that in the results section. Um, figure three is showing the basic data pipelining for a single fold from the, the uh, K-fold validation step. Um, you'll notice that we do only save the best model. Um, it's not, we do not save at the end of the 3000 epochs. We save whenever the validation um, finds the best, the best fit. Um, the scoring is done using the, um, a combination of the Sorensen dice coefficient the Hasdorff distance and the mean surface distance. Um, the Sorensen dice coefficient is simply a measure of the degree of similarity between um, two, the two volumes. Um, so the, the labeled mask file and the prediction. Um, this, the Hasdorff distance is the maximum distance between the two surfaces. And the mean surface distance is the average distance between the two surfaces. Um, those um, scores can be seen up here in the results section. We can see the file number um, and see the, the dice scores that each one achieved, the Hasdorff distances and the mean surface distances, uh, along with their average and standard deviation at the bottom. In conclusion, this method works well. Um, there are, there is one major outlier, file 19 has a fairly low dice score a fairly high Hasdorff distance and a fairly high mean surface distance. Um, so there, there are mistakes that are still being made by this algorithm, but we believe that that can be reduced with additional training data. Uh, when compared to other algorithms that currently exist for aortic um, segmentation, we can see that the 
as, as far as dice is concerned, we are right on average. We would be above average without the outlier. Um, and the standard deviation is a little high. And again, without that outlier, we can improve this. Um, currently, the best bets to remove outliers and to smooth it all out is to have more training data, um, but also potentially to employ um, better augmentation um, or potentially um, post-processing to the, the returned predictions. Thank you for your time. Have a good day.